So as I mentioned, we'll do we'll just do some quick introductions. Uh, then we will have this wonderful session with our with our three alumni here, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So for quick introductions, we'll start with Vasily. Uh, good eye to you all. So I'm Vasily Joens Tour. I'm the director of the uh, doctoral school. Uh, prior to that, I used to be the uh, academic director to the DBI France program, so that um, I've got a fair understanding of how the DBI the, the DBI goes, and I can see um, a few of my uh, former students who graduated some time ago and who will share their experience with you. Not that I'm watching them. So welcome tonight. Thanks. Marielle. Yes, hello, happy to be here. I am the academic of director of the USA program. So uh, uh, meeting and following the journeys of the uh, US cohorts, which I very much enjoy doing. It's uh, been one full year now that I'm in this position, uh, very much enjoying this. So, uh, welcome to you all, I'm going to listen to you. Thank you. And Professor Dima Lewis is our academic director for DBA France program, but couldn't join us for this call tonight, but she was on the, our, our last webinar, if you happen to view it. And I am Ginny Hinderscheidt. I'm the marketing, marketing and admissions manager. So I will be your first point of contact if you have any questions about the about the DBA. Um, and then you see a couple of our, of our other um, academic advisors as well on this. Um, and you're happy, welcome to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. Right, and with that, I would like to welcome our three alumni, and we will start with Miguel. Miguel, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, thank you very much. I, I wasn't I wasn't ready to be the, the first one, but thank you, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. And um, I guess Latinos are coming first in this panel, so I'm very happy to do this. And yeah, well, I hope uh, in terms of my, my professional background, I work in higher education. My areas are in strategy and marketing. And yeah, pretty much uh, something like that. I work also in the US for a, in, for a university in Florida, as you can see over there. And I graduated in 2021. Uh, my thesis was about domino logic in the media industry, and it was very exciting so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, we'll come right back to you. I think we'll have more questions. Thank you. And Jonas. Hello. Yes, and uh, my name is Jonas Ekufo or Jonas Abraham Ekufo. And I graduated in 2018, my DBA, and my current profession and my background is in health and economics and finance areas that I specialize currently. Formerly, I work in the banking industry and also in the insurance industry, but at the moment, I am focused more, more on the national health and services in the in England at the moment. My thesis covered the topic cover corporate governance and bank accountability, and I specifically focuses on the role and the quality of corporate disclosure in terms of we have in financial institutions. That's the areas that I did focus on and greatly in my thesis. Following the completion of that, I also ended up turning it around to broaden it to cover wider financial institution and that led to the book on corporate governance, you know, accountability areas that I did cover and I did published with uh, Pargrave, Macmillan and Springer Nature, which we published in, I think, in just about two years after I graduated, I ended up publishing the, the book currently worldwide that I have. And that's, that's the areas that are so, so far covered. And I'm happy to take different questions as we go on. And I'm currently, and Vasily will probably know, I'm currently also doing book review proposal for Pargrave at the moment. So I'm on the second review now. I've done first one already. So it's something that probably came out of my, my publication of my DBA. So that's, that's thank you. Yeah. 
Yes, congratulations. Great, and I think you, you also have a very yeah. exciting um, career career that you, I, I'm sure we will love to hear more about in just a moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. and now we will introduce Amenobia, who has also published a book. So she can tell us a little bit about her background. Hi, hi, nice to meet you all. So I finished my DBA in 2016, and I researched. Uh, small businesses in deprived communities. The case and my the title was Small Businesses in Deprived Communities: The Case of South African uh, Black Female-Owned SMEs. Um, the purpose of the research was basically to find out whether female entrepreneurship can have a make a difference to to poverty alleviation. Um, my background before uh, before the DBA was the support of small businesses, SMEs, SME development and support for large mining houses, gold mining houses in South Africa. I also worked in financial inclusion for women um, for the Grass Michelle Trust in South Africa, and I'd worked in management consulting. So the DBA basically brought all of these areas together. Um, uh, yes, and uh, yeah, so what do I do now? I Based on the DBA, I decided to set up an outfit, a business that supports women entrepreneurs. The idea was to provide end-to-end -end support. Um, I discovered through my research that there are various challenges that female entrepreneurs almost across the board face. And I wanted to put myself in a place where I could help them to meet those challenges so they could do more of the good that they, I discovered that they do. So that's basically it. Right, with that, I will just stop the slide so we can see the group here. Um, thanks. So we'll start with some questions, but we'll let the, the conversation just flow, because I think what we'd like to see today is learn um, about your career paths, how the DBA has impact, impacted your career, um, and I guess how, how and any advice you would like to give and we'll invite everyone on the chat or on the call to also just type their questions into the chat. So with that, I will ask you what has been the main impact of your DBA project in terms of your professional objectives and aspirations? Someone like to start? All right, so I can I start? Yes. <laughs> um, well, uh, I think it, you you can also you can always argue about, for, for example, to have a professional career path that is that you're following and that's why you enter into the into the doctorate school. But I think uh, I, I'm sure my colleagues are going to speak about it. But I, I I like to 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 talk about the personal aspect, the personal journey that also goes with you when you are in a, in a DBA. I think that's also very important. It usually is not very commented because you 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 learn about yourself. You learn about uh, different skills. You acquire different skills. Uh, you become more resilient. You become more. Um, Focus on different things, more discipline, and many different things. Even, I mean, some of, of the colleagues that I worked with when I was in in the DBA, I mean, they were already so talented. I mean, seriously. But I think you need to be very open because once you start, you are going to improve different areas, and you need to be in a very open-minded state of mind because it's it's very important that. And I know some people would say that, yeah, it's. It's also about um, uh, my work or more money. The DBA means more money. The DBA means uh, a, a new position. Yeah, I mean that's valid, but I think it, it's not. Um, it's not enough. Uh, you need a personal um, objective, a personal purpose, because you also are going to uh, meet amazing, extraordinary people in your supervisors, your peers, uh, your colleagues. And it's not just uh, money and work. It's also about yourself and your personal path. I think I would like to to start the discussion with that. But yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I can go. Yeah, I can say. For me, 
I think I'll, I'll categorize the impact and my aspiration into two aspects of it. I initially wanted to do it for one, credibility. That's when I wanted to do that. I wanted to take the subjects and to do it in a way that I will be able to be recognized and gain to a credible terms of expertise in the area, which was my primary aim at the beginning of trying to get into that field of this. And to some extent, that has paid off because immediately after that, there is a lot of subject matter areas in my work and a number of areas that I do go, I will be the go to to actually give some validation, assurance, a lot of the distance that I have because it's been recognized within that I am an expert in that area in terms of this. So that's for me, that's one aspect of it. But there are other aspects of it, which is also true for, for some of us when we wanted to do, because I had intended to decide whether to do a, a normal doctorate or a DBA in this instance. And I wanted an applied subject anyway. So for me, the DBA combination of being an applied concept was for me was really important, that professional aspect of it. And that translates into a lot of things at work, you know, in terms of not only just the expertise, but the way my career then progress within the recognition of pay structure, position wise, how you position yourself in terms of seniority, in terms of a lot of these things that have a practical implication. Because I didn't realize in the end in when I, I was in the middle of about to finish and then a number of senior positions then came up and they required PhDs you know, to be as a minimum requirement, you know, to be in the position that I was in to be able to speak. So there were things that fall in line as I was trying to do into those things and that culminated into a number of things that have kind of completely taken my career into a different path that I'm really proud that at least I managed to be able to do that. So I'll, I'll, I'll grade that into that two aspect of it and we can go into detail of other stuff, but that's for me the impact in terms of the way it has had me. Yeah. Thank you. Amanabia? If the question is, what has been the main impact of your DBA project in terms of your professional objectives and aspirations? Yes, yes. So I liked what Miguel said, Jose Miguel said, because for me, that's very important. I set out to do the DBA initially not necessarily because of career, not necessarily because I wanted a raise, because I wanted more money. I needed a person, it was, it was personal. I needed a new challenge. I needed something to sink myself into, something that would absorb me, you know? Um, that was one, one part of it. And I also needed to, to make myself relevant. Not that I wasn't relevant, but I needed something that would polish off whatever I was, whatever I had, and make it shine and make it, I wanted, I wanted, whatever I did to count. And this was the direction that I found. Um, so that was the reason that I did the, the DBA initially. Subsequently, um, I, I just loved it. The, 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 the process of the research, actual talking to these women entrepreneurs, I learned so much. I learned so much um, about, themself, about them and also about myself. As Miguel was saying, you, 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 it's almost like you put yourself through fire, you know, you willingly put yourself through fire and you don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know how you're going to come out, but you do. And when I look back, it was like, wow, I'm so proud that I did this. I am capable of this. And if I can do this, you know, I can do so much more. Um, there were processes that I followed in my research theory, in gathering, in documenting, that, I mean, I was so proud of myself. I basically still got the rolls, mega rolls of paper that I rolled up, um, you know, uh, because I was doing things for practical reasons. But at the end of the day, I realized that there was so much value in the work that had been produced. Jeannie, I think what you're actually asking is about what, what impact are we making now you know can, can that, I, that was actually my second question <laughs> yeah to get to that because can you I, can I just, you did a lot during your yeah go ahead please uh, it's because some of the questions that i read over here in the chat 
and they say that maybe they can go faster and they graduate faster if they're full time and all that. Can I just add something just um, in addition to what is already there? I think sometimes when you're in your masters, you are uh, like inclined to think that it's all about the accomplishment. I need to finish. I need a degree. I need it. I need it. I need it yeah. right now. I need it. I need it. I need it. But you know what? When you do a DBDA, there's a there's a difference. I don't know. I don't know if my colleagues agree with me. But you actually enjoy the process. You yeah. enjoy the journey. It's not just, yeah, I need a degree. Of course you need a degree. But there's so many things involved in such a, a sophisticated journey that you have in a DBA. I don't know how to explain it. I'm sorry, <laughs> but there's something yeah. that you enjoy doing, doing all this little by little. So it takes time. So, yeah, I yeah. invite everyone not to hurry. Yeah, yeah. do it and enjoy the process. I, I just wanted to say yeah. that, sorry. Yes, I think I'll, I'll add to that, you know, because I, I came in with the view that I wanted to finish within a couple of two, three years, everything. Mm -hmm. And a couple of us, when we started, had the same mentality. But as you said, during the process, the, the fact that you wanted to do something that you really like, you know, and you started to look at the journey completely gave us a very complete different view about I want to do it well. I need to take my time. I have to make sure that it comes a whole host of things, then figure out that I'm not going to rush. You know, I'm actually going to do it and enjoy the journey in terms of doing this. Things. And it was quite nice because I know some people are saying, oh, you do a part time and you do. I had a full time work, you know, but irrespective of that, I was able to probably combine them in a way that I was enjoying the journey I'm going through all this, whilst I'm also having my, my professional listing. So I think I definitely agree on that perspective. And it's really important that people take that into consideration, not just hurry up yet, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when, Thank you. Can I yeah. jump in just Yes, very of course. When, when, great. when you are in a research, mm -hmm. when you are doing research, it's so different because sometimes when you're doing your master or somewhere else, your ambition is to finish as soon as possible. But when you are doing research, your ambition is, you know, I have more questions. It's going to take me more yeah. time. You know, I have more questions. I have, I, I need more time. So your ambition is so different. That's why I'm telling you it changes. It changes the way you think, you know, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted to jump in. That's great. And that said, our team will make sure you do finish eventually. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. You're not going to become like we could become lifelong students, but you will do it as yeah. graduates. Um, what we're going to do is we encourage everyone to type your questions in if they we're going to just keep um, hearing from our alumni and then we'll come back to your questions during the Q&A. So especially some of the questions that are a little bit more about the program itself. Um, so that way they're not all in the chat and we can discuss them aloud for the recording as well for um, for everyone who couldn't be here. Um, so we'll move the, the answers out of the chat and we'll discuss them during the Q&A, if that's all right, especially the questions about the program format we'll, we'll save for, for the after. But now getting back to Amenabia's point, I'm going to come to our second question. And it is, could you share a couple ideas on how your DBA has had an impact on your practice or professional field and on the communities with whom you work? So we're, I guess what we're wondering is about your career now and the impact you felt that came from, from your DBA. And says you're all working on exciting stuff now as well. We'd love to hear from you. Who's, who's going to start? <laughs> Am I Niva? Okay, I'll go. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the impact on what I'm doing now, there, there, there are a number of things. Um, what I learned in the research process was about all of these challenges that women face, women entrepreneurs, and also about how for a lot of them, sometimes unconsciously, they set out to empower other people once they themselves start to be empowered. And yet in spite of all of this, they face all these challenges. So lots of people depend on them. Um, and I, I thought, I can't take this for granted. This is not just something that I do, you know, and and put somewhere. I've got to I've got to use this this information. So I did the book. I did the book. Um, the book. It helps to give me relevance. It helps to give me relevance. It helps to establish me as an expert, even if nobody else says I'm an expert. 
I can say I'm an expert. And the other thing that I did was that I set up a business in Ghana. I, when I did the DBA, I lived in South Africa. Um, I'd lived there for, for a long time. So the DBA was, my case was Black South African women entrepreneurs. And I fully, when I started developing the concept for my business, it was to be a business in South Africa. But I, I am originally from Ghana and I, I came here and I saw that the need here was so much greater. So I set up my business to provide funding and to provide training to women entrepreneurs to enable them to fulfill their potential. I haven't done funding because, you know, it's very difficult to raise a fund, but I've done training. I've done training, uh, training in business skills. I've also done training in uh, leadership skills, which is very important in terms of, well, I guess everybody in business, but specifically for women um, in this part of the world, and I think it applies to other parts of the world, women tend to be held back. In this part of the world for tradition, uh, culture and various reasons, all of that adds to, you know, women's tendency to, to hold themselves back a lot of the time. And so it's all about building them up and getting them to gain confidence. And we are talking about people in business. So uh, basically the DBA has enabled me to do all of this. I work as a gender consultant um, and it all feeds back to, to the DBA. I wrote an article uh, yesterday for um, as part of my role as, as gender consultant. I wrote an article which was directly linked to my DBA. I was thinking inspiration, inspiration, and I opened up my, my, my thesis and there it was, you know? So it, it keeps on giving, basically. Yeah, I can go. I think mine in terms of impact, and first, and I did specialize in banking and finance when I did my DBA. So I wrote the whole expertise around it. Funny enough, I'm in hospital finance and hospital administration and management. And at the moment, I'm actually, what I have learned so much in the financial services is actually telling me exactly what probably is wrong with the health services and hospital management that I'm having. And I'm using that as part of improvement packages that we have now in about how we might want to be able to do a better governance, better accountability within hospitals and healthcare and, and companies and how you might want to do that. Hopefully, I'm hopeful that probably that might turn into a second book at some point. But that's what I'm looking at in terms of the way I'm looking at in terms of the impact it has had. Obviously, as I said, I did publish my book and widely, you know, to be used by MBAs and PhD as well as regulators to be able to use the nature of the way I published the book. So hopefully, I know Pargriff has been selling a lot of it. So probably, I hope it's making an impact, you know, and people are buying it for them. So that's, that's, that's part of the, the part of, in terms of the impact that we have. And obviously, I'm gonna be able to touch on some of those things about being experts and you do get called upon, you know, sometimes it's a pay speech. Sometimes you get called upon to be able to use it and people sought you to be able to look at some of those areas. So it's actually making another impact in that specific area. The last one I also say is it also gave me confidence, you know, really gave me confidence for myself, believe. And not long ago, I mean, last year, I managed to set up a health, international health company, you know, with a group of consultants to actually set up in private hospitals. And I think a lot of the things and the confidence and the thing and the, uh, we have gone through the DBA were all part of the preparatory work that has helped me to be able to go into that in terms of that. So the governance structure, the type of things that we are setting it internationally is actually helping me to really look at that part of those things, which I hope that at least it will be able to be have an impactful nature as I move forward in terms of part of this. And so I, I think that's the way I will categorize the, the three key areas of impact I'm seeing currently. Yeah. Thank you. Everything, everything my amazing colleague said, I agree, absolutely agree. Uh, but but I, I will, it, it, leadership, confidence, how your research is going to make a difference for somebody else, all of that, I absolutely agree. But you know what, I, I need to get back behind the scenes and about uh, speaking about enjoying the journey, enjoying the path of being in a DBA, something that is usually never said and we know it happened. 
like the techniques to be a professional researcher, I, I, I think and maybe it's not that glamorous, but it is amazing, actually. For example, I, I learned how to read efficiently. I know you're going to say, Miguel, everybody knows how to read. Come on, efficiently. Everybody can, everybody can read, but efficiently. How to write academically? That's, I mean, that's a different world. How to code everything you read in order for you to write I mean, that's something that you usually never say. Nobody is going to tell you because maybe it's not that glamorous. It's behind the scenes. But that's so amazing when you do that. I think it makes a difference because wherever you go, when you are doing that techniques, everyone is going, oh, you do research so differently. For example, for the colleagues that are in, based in the U.S., like the seminars that you are maybe in the U.S. and maybe you need to organize your time. The use of technology, it's amazing because when you have, I mean, after the pandemic and during the pandemic, so so many people were so afraid of technology. I was so ready for technology because we, we already work that way. And you learn software, very different software, like social network analysis, uh, qualitative analysis, so many things that it's usually the, the journey. That's why I was telling you, you need to enjoy the journey too. Uh, you learn how to communicate. That's so important. And you're going to say, Miguel, everybody knows how to communicate. Come on. I was a teacher. I was, I thought I was good at it. And you know what? You can always improve. I, I mean, I still, I have to improve, but how to present your research. That's so important. And usually nobody tells you. Usually we say like after I have the, 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 the degree, but you need to enjoy the journey seriously because you know, when I, what I do, I teach. So when you teach and you, empower younger researchers to do what you learned in your DBA, it's always a positive impact. That's what I wanted to add. That is a great segue into my next question is what advice would you give to anyone considering doing a DBA or even some of those on the call today who are currently doing a DBA? Who's going to start, Jonas? <laughs> or yeah, I, I can. I can again. For me, the advice is also because of we talk about the journey and the experience you need to have. The advice is to choose, you know. And I always recommend that people choose Grenoble because of the experience I have. But it's really important that you choose the program that also will help you. With the, with the kind of the faculty and with the kind of the things and the support structure that you get. It play a big role in your journey because as you could go through and I've always said that at least I had such a fantastic time with Grenoble. So I really, because I did, my, I did my MBA before I then went on to go and do my DBA. So I've prelude to the experience I had, but it is important that you can have that part of the structure. The other thing is also that you don't have to quit or give up because you might want when you start doing it you might have challenges here and there but i think at the end of the day you know it's something that the end result also matter you will enjoy it much in terms of when you finish in terms of this thing so it's something that you have to think because you will be alone at some problem at some point you know and that part of this thing you should take it as an inspiration when you work that way in terms of the way you do and then you you actually go through that structure and utilize the cohorts members that you have in terms of whatever that you use because this is also a good support structure that you can also keep each other in terms of information in terms of network in terms of things that you can have it's really important that at least you can also get that basis of things that you can have you know and i think that will probably will be something that you you will benefit greatly i've got great friends through the, the school so i think it's, it's really important that at least people take those into consideration yeah Well, thank you. We're, we have 550 alumni now and over 100 students, and we're amazed at, even with those numbers, how close we've all been able to stay. We're 30, this is our 30th anniversary, and the involvement and the activity over the years, and so, you know, because I, maybe it's because it takes a few years or because it's so hard. Um, people just, it stays such a very close, close community, regardless of, of the time that goes by, and we're very grateful. To, to have all that such an amazing amazing students as well in our lives so Amenabia, would you have any advice yes definitely i think it's very important to select a topic that you're that you're interested in 
that you're hopefully passionate about that will hold your attention for the duration of the program. It has to be something that you're prepared to sacrifice for. Sacrifice in terms of long hours, sacrifice in terms of giving up your social life to some extent. Because uh, these are things that we were told and then subsequently experienced. It's a lonely journey. <laughs> it's a lonely journey. People who haven't walked it won't understand why you're turning down invitations, why you always, you know, you become a loner. Um, and you have to enjoy what you're doing enough to be able to sustain, um, for, you know, in order to be able to sustain the, 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 um, the work and the hours and the time that it takes. And then in the end, it's so worthwhile. So uh, be careful when, you, when you're choosing. Think about, it, think about it long and hard and let it be something that your heart is into. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I think why why would you can why would you consider a DBA? Uh, uh, well, first of all, I think you need a higher purpose, as I was saying in the beginning, right? It's not just about a better position or more money. It is in France. It's in Grenoble. Yeah, that that should be the killing argument, right? But it's not enough. I mean, it's beautiful, by the way, but uh, but it's not enough. Like like Maniva was saying, yeah, you need a purpose when you are in the middle of the night. You need to have something that's going that's going to motivate you. Something that is within you. It's not it's not your boss. It's not anywhere. It's it's within you. And I think it's also yeah. And I agree. It's challenging to work on your own. And I don't know to live in your head because sometimes you're like all the time thinking in your research. But you learn to enjoy. I don't know. It's 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 good. But yeah, it it makes a big difference. Uh, especially those who are in this in this panel. And it's it it hasn't been long time since you finished your masters. It's different. The experience is so different because when you're in the master, it's more like more dynamic and it, it, you it's it's different. You work it, it teamwork is more. Uh, encourage and yeah, you can you can do that in the DBA, especially in the seminars. But it's actually your research and it's your own higher purpose that is going to take you there. So it's different. I don't know. I'm not very good explaining at this, but it, 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 you feel it different. But it's also very good, very rewarding, and you need to be open to it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's true, Miguel. It does take a, a year or two usually before people are ready to commit um, and to do the DBA, but a lot of it is just coming up with the subject, you know, and, and deciding, you know, because you have to think about your career goals and, and where, you know, what, what is it that you want to spend three years doing um, and then narrowing the topic down. So uh, we're happy to to work with you on that if you, you have some questions about, about research topics. So... Um, we could try to look at some of these questions here. We have a few people interested in our PhD program. So I'll just be quick about our PhD because we have a PhD and a DBA. Our PhD is full time um, in person here in Grenoble. Uh, it's a very, um, well, maybe, maybe actually, you know what, why don't I let Vasily, the director of the doctoral school, give a quick description of our PhD. We'll actually have another webinar in July for those interested in our PhD program and we'll be opening up recruitment in the fall, but it's quite different than the DBA. So we, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but we'll just let you discuss I, I it quickly. Will, I will indeed not be long at all. Uh, the PhD does not address the same audience as the P DBA program first. And second, the purpose is not the same. The PhD is usually addressed to students, so to people who have done their masters and want to continue uh, in academia. Uh, for the DBA, it is not necessarily for an academic career. It can, but not necessarily, and it is addressed to mature executives, so senior executives who have something to say, who want to link their professional practice, their experience, and research. So those are two distinct doctoral programs with a distinct identity, and address to different uh, audiences. I will not say more for tonight, but I would like just to clarify this. Thank you. Yes, we encourage you to still you know, put your questions into the chat and we'll be happy to 
Can, can I say just how amazing Absolutely. is Dr. Dr. Vasily uh, a comment in the chat? In the I'm gonna read it out loud because it's worth it. In the Thank MBA, you. you learn recipes and cook. In the DBA, you are the chef inventing and writing the recipes others can cook. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, it's well well formulated. Ginny, can I add something to um, the advice? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's really important to start working with your, your supervisor as early on as possible and also to be open to be open to accepting their suggestions and their advice because it can make all the difference. I mean, it did for me. Um, yeah. And even in terms of your topic, I went in thinking that I was going to be doing one thing and I was so challenged, um, you know, by my supervisor and, you know, made to think in different directions that eventually brought me to female entrepreneurship that I didn't think was such a great thing before. And now it's like it's this amazing area. So, yes, I, I, it's important to start working with your supervisor as early as you can. That's good. And that somebody asked the question here about getting assigned supervisors. Yes, yeah, so we're one of the few DBA programs that has supervision from day one. And how this works is once you submit your proposal, you'll go through a couple interviews and then our board meets and we'll suggest supervisors to you. We encourage you to check out our website and get to be familiar with research at, at GEM. And if there's somebody who jumps out to you, we're happy to make introductions, but it's not, you don't have to do it on your own. We often know immediately somebody who's either in your industry or, you know, applies research in the same way that you do. Um, and so we usually are, you know, our, our, our team has advice for you immediately and can help assign this. You will then meet the supervisor um, and it's part of a, a process that you go through together. Yeah, How about the rest of you? I don't know if I can add something, but mm -hmm. usually when you are in the seminars, uh, you have different classes and you meet them all. And you are just as a student, you don't know who to pick. Like, it doesn't matter. They're all good. And I want mm -hmm. him. I want her. No, I want her again. No, and, and him too. Yeah, that's, yeah. Jen, that, that's going to happen to you. I promise you. It happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that's true. You will get to know the other faculty as well through the, the coursework and then also with our doctoral school team. Mm -hmm. So any other advice that you'd like to give? I think I'll probably second what Amanovia said, especially on the topic that you choose. You know, and then the direction that you might want to go. And I always say that my experience is that you shouldn't be afraid to discuss with your supervisor earlier on if you want to go to different direction and to get there, you know, in terms of help, in terms of how you might want to look at. Because you might go in, like, start a topic and you feel like, oh, this is the, the correct topic that I, you will start with. That's what gets you admitted and you start the program. But the way the program is structured actually is really nice that as you go through each stages of the workshop and these things, you learn so much and you kind of change your mind around certain areas that you might want to, but you shouldn't be afraid, you know, to really discuss it early with your supervisors, you know, and then, you know, figure out if you want to change you know, to find a way to actually update yourself in terms of whether methodological way or how your topic you might want to have. Because you start with one topic, I started with one topic, but I modify, it's the same area, but I modify it a bit and that helped me in my research, you know, in the data gathering, in the way you do some of those things and stuff like that. So I think that's really important when you select a topic, but actually don't be afraid, you know, to really have that discussion, you know, and get that earlier on in the process. And then you use the, the structure of the workshop as you go forward to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's great advice. We have a question about, about the program format. Maybe Marielle would like to answer this. Sorry, so the program format. So I guess that the online sessions, asynchronous, synchronous, or both, maybe about the yeah. seminars. Yeah, okay, so indeed there is the 
three out of the four seminars I mentioned are face to face or in class, and that uh, um, helps also to there's a real exchange and a, and a group momentum there. And what I see is that the cohorts actually they they help each other out a lot. There's a lot of bouncing off between the students themselves. It doesn't all come from the from the teacher, so to speak. So that is in the seminars, face-to-face uh, -face seminars. Meanwhile, also to keep track of, uh, well, of what, to, to keep contact, there are webinars um, also organized in, um, you know, in intervals, which are on specific topics. So on academic writing skills is the next one up, and uh, also how to, uh, well, also directly geared to the milestones, um, how to uh, do a literature review. So these are, uh, there are eight webinars in total that are just, so each with its own theme. Um, and so, so indeed, indeed of format, that is what the, uh, what, what, what we're speaking about. Um, for most of you, the supervisors are also uh, remote. So that's only a rare situation where we have face-to-face uh, -face contact. So this is so um, this is uh, per student and supervisor. You arrange between yourselves how to keep in touch. So that de depends the format. There's no, there's no, there are no rules. Some meet so most of the course months. coursework is uh, synchronous, so it's live and interactive, mm. with the exception of some some preparations. And then same with it with the correspondence with your supervisor, could be at least monthly, sometimes more, sometimes you know as you're going. So uh, we're yeah, like uh, Miguel was saying earlier, we're very fortunate to have <laughs> technology now. I think we're one of um, a program that got uh, boosted during COVID, right? Because what a great time to do a doctorate when you can't leave your home. So, <laughs> so it's a bit so. Um, I'd like to come back a little bit to the question of of impact and hear a little bit more about what you are working on now or what you're hoping to achieve and what you think what you think you can do with your thanks to your DBA. Like Jonas, for example, is saying you launched a, a project last year. Yes, I think what in terms of my day to day job and I'm still doing it in the although they broaden the scope. So I have a larger team in terms of my day to day work I'm doing. But on a personal level, I'm actually saying I'm trying to do something that will turn it to a second book at some point. So I'm researching in a different area of instead of a financial institution, I'm now doing hospital authority and stuff. But that's something that is also continual learning for me is, is good that I'm having stopped learning. So I'm doing something else on that aspect. And then the other one, which is exciting for me is uh, some a project that, and as I said, we've launched a company now, which is uh, into private healthcare, you know, that we wanted. And we started with the concept about, you know, affordable health in Africa in terms of that, but we've we turned it into a whole range of uh, medical advisory services that we will want to offer between the developing countries and also the, in terms of the UK. So it's something that I'm glad we've launched it. Last week, we've actually launched a website now, actually, so we've gone global. So I'll put a link probably into the Grenoble and site for you. But it's an exciting and, and pieces of work that we, we hope that at least we will turn it internationally. We've got offices registered in Ghana and also in the UK. Next month, we are opening offices in, in Delaware and also roughly probably LA at some point in the year. So I'm hopeful that at least that's my private investing with a group of and uh, medical doctors to form that group here. Thank you. Oh, that's really exciting. We're looking forward yeah. to to yeah. learning more and seeing how this goes. So yeah. I'm happy to to share any information with our community yeah. that you'd like. We'd love Thank to see you. that. Thank you. And Miguel, you you changed jobs recently as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still in the academic career, both Mexico and in the US. 
And you, well, let me just add uh, something that I think is also very important about this. And as a closing argument here, um, it, it actually, it, it's you don't know who you're who you are going to inspire, who you're going to influence by doing the DBA. You you really don't know uh, people around you. And you know, in the academic uh, area, we actually need more good business doctors, uh, wherever you go. So yeah, it, it you it, you need to inspire others to 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 join this path, to to start this journey because yeah, as I was saying, it's very exciting. I think doing the DBA at Grenoble was one of the most amazing, unique, and rewarding experiences in my life, and in so many levels. And uh, yeah, you want to inspire and invite others to be happy in life doing this and it's so amazing you don't know who you're going to inspire it could be your children it could be your friends your students your colleagues your boss you don't know uh when you pursue a dba a dba and i know maybe some of you will say miguel you can also inspire people by dancing in tiktok yeah you can also <laughs> do that but you can also do more meaningful things and uh yeah dba is a very good it, it gives you so many things in so many levels and as I was saying, and as Jonas was saying, it keeps giving till today. So yeah, I invite everyone to to do this career. It's so amazing. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Miguel. And actually, I have to admit, we're, we kind of nerd out when we look at all of the profiles of our alumni and what everybody's working on. We feel like we're surrounded by stars sometimes. So it's really inspiring and encouraging to see uh, what people are doing. And we're, it's, it is a privilege be able to, to, to be part of the community. If I can add to what Miguel said, um, you don't know who you're inspiring. Um, and it's not something to be taken for granted. I, I don't put the letter, I don't put doctor in front of my name generally. So on LinkedIn, I'm not doctor so-and-so. I don't introduce myself as doctor so-and-so. But there are places where I'm actually told off or the, the person introducing will say, you wouldn't know it, but she's Dr. Amanobia Boating. And in the circles in which I operate, it's actually important because people are inspired. Um, I'll speak for this part of the world. People are inspired when they see you, uh, you relate to them, you know, normally, um, you're down to earth, and then they realize, wow, she's a doctor. It gives them hope. It makes them realize that they can they can follow your they can follow in your footsteps, you know. And for women, that that's that's very important. It's all part of the confidence building. So we may take it for granted, but we shouldn't because somebody's looking up at us and getting inspiration from us. So uh, that's part of who you're going to be. It's not just for you. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll see if there's any last questions for the day. Oh, Marielle, would you like to jump in? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. Sorry, no, I, I confused buttons, but I wanted to say that indeed, thank you for these really inspiring words. To Anna, Anna Nobea. Yeah, very beautiful. And Amanobea did not say everything. <laughs> so on the impact her work has had. Um, so the thesis led to a book and so the book led to uh, a um, radio show if I remember, where you're talking about uh, female entrepreneurship in, and I think it was on radio broadcasted uh, all over Africa, if I remember the story. Uh, and uh, also Alan Obea, after those uh, radio talks, uh, has been invited to uh, first advise and then do fundraising for a foundation uh, to, um, subsidizing uh, women willing to launch their own business. So the DBI thesis has had a succession of offspring, which which is which uh, has resulted in where Amenobia is at today. 
And that's something very interesting. You never know what the very offspring of your work can be. If you also consider Jonas, Jonas started um, in the financial, so in the financial services, uh, worked on accountability in banks, then has been in charge of equality before uh, COVID-19 vaccination, and now is launching a new business that has nothing to do with this. And all this has been indirectly enabled by the DBA. And nobody could have known 10 years ago where Jonas would be at today. And Jose, I'm sorry, as I have not supervised you, I cannot speak for you as I do for Jonas and Amadebea, but if you want to add something um, on the unexpected impact the DBI might have had on you, please do. Yeah, I should have talked more about my research. I know <laughs> I should have. Yeah, just very, very briefly. Thank you very much. Oh my God, it's so extraordinary to share this um, um, event with, with my colleagues. I, I don't know, I, I could speak about my research. I invite you to follow me on LinkedIn. Maybe you, you'll find more information there. But I think you become more disciplined wherever you go. I mean, even if you're invited into media or if you are uh, doing research, if you're preparing a class or anything, you'll be you, there, there. It's always with you. The DBA will always be with you in anything you do. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. All right. I think on that note, um, we we will cut the, the webinar for today. Um, we invite you to reach out to us with any questions, especially with specific uh, questions about the program, and I'm happy to, to answer them and to schedule anything you would like. The, uh, the three alumni here on the call are also part of our alumni ambassadors, and so their profiles and bios are featured on our website if you would like to, to find their LinkedIn pages and see a little bit more about their work. I, I will send that to everybody um, in, uh, in an email afterwards. And it was a pleasure, such a pleasure to have you all here and giving your testimony. And we are so grateful. And so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Go for the DBA, thank everybody. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Jonas. Thank you, Maniva. Thank you, Dr. Vasily. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Jeannie. And all the participants. Well, thank thank you. you very much and looking forward to seeing you. Act.